Toby Booner's over here with his hand up. We haven't seen anything from Toby before. Toby, would you have you got something you want to show us? You're new new to this group. Yeah, I have a couple of my things I've made over the last few years, if you'd like to see them. Wouldn't There's one in the background there that I can share screen. Yep, go for it. Okay. I have a spotlight on you. Uh, Toby's a member of Susquehanna up in Harrisburg. There we go. Got it going. You got it. There you go. Okay, this is a piece of uh, box elder. It's five inches by six inches. And I do a lot of die pieces. So that's mainly what I'm going to show just because it's a little bit different than most others. That's uh, Linden, actually. Huh. It's dyed, it's dyed also. I think I used, uh, I went over first with blue and then with red, I believe. So do you find that the dye, the, does the dye bring up the grain and the figure in woods that otherwise are kind of bland and calm, like pear? Absolutely. Like this linden here, it was just a plain sort of wood-looking color. But by putting the dye on, and the, for some reason, the different colors soak in different areas of the wood independently of each other, so it comes out like this. I don't know how it works, but I like what the effect this is uh, maple, seven inches by three inches. On this one, I put a little bit of uh, yellow in the feather area and then put blue over the whole thing. So it came out kind of yellowish greenish. Well, how do you feather in that yellow so it doesn't have hard edges? What do you do? Uh, I, I use the very tip of the of brush and just kind of streak it across. And then once you put the the second coat on it it blends in the hard edges i use water as a as a dilute for the okay. dye i use a drain stint dye so you're kind of so, making a water you're doing water coloring on there really yeah, sort of a little bit yeah when you first put it on the brush strokes look really harsh but when you wash over it with another coat it just kind of blends it across so it, it looks more natural And this one is maple also with some spalting on it, and I dyed it blue. That's uh, five by four inches. Another piece of maple from the same tree. These, this tree had a lot of uh, figure in it, the, uh, whatever you call it. <laughs> spalting? No, the other, the crosswise figure there. Oh, I can't think of the word. Buoyance or something like that. Uh, anyhow. I took the uh, the blanks and put them in a plastic bag and sat them in the corner of my shop for uh, up to about eight weeks. So each week I would check to see how the spalting was going on the piece. And when it got to a point where I liked it, then I put it on the lathe and turned it. Poof, nice. How tall is that? This one is seven inches by four and a half. Thank you. Oof, backwards, here we go. This is a piece of maple burl just a vase shape and like you say the when you put the dye on it really makes the figure stand out and are you putting on that dye like is it quite dilute or is it concentrated i mean what's the i use for a piece like this i use maybe uh four tablespoons of water and maybe five drops of trans blue dye that's all you need okay so it's very then, thin, in other words what's that very dilute in other words Yes, and, and I like to do two coats because when you put the first coat on, sometimes when you initially put the brush down, it gets a little darker than when you spread it out. So when you put two coats on, that kind of evens out that blotchiness. So I put two thin coats on to cover the whole piece. Then I let it dry in between. There's another piece of uh, maple, just showing the figure. On this one, I, the heartwood over here on the left-hand side I went over with red and then put blue over the whole thing just to kind of highlight the heartwood. Backwards. Another piece of maple, seven by six. I just did in green. Well, I, I probably did yellow and then blue over top of it. That's normally the way I do it. Rather than mix the green all together in one container, I do two separate applications to come out. It, it's just. To me, it adds more variation in the color. Is that a lid? Is that a box with a lid? Yes, 
It's a lid on top. Toby, is that uh, yellow dye dry before you put the blue on? Yes, I got them dry in between coats. Toby, does that lid sit on a rim or is it just sit on the slope of the bowl? No, there's a little ledge inside that it sits on. I have other pictures that shows that, but I just wanted to, for this application, for you guys, I just wanted to show what the piece was. That's spectacular coloring in there. This, this is one of my favorites here. This is maple also. It's eight inches across, four inches high. This one, I also did the bottom in red first and then blue over the whole thing. Now that's a heartwood sapwood combination. Correct. And the very the rim up there, I just left natural color. That's nice, beautiful. Uh, first some... thing I seen or thought of when I seen that one was the Northern Lights. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It looks like the Northern Lights. Yeah, I agree. Spectacular. Toby, how do, you, how do you keep the dye from getting on that natural edge? I just start from the bottom and come up with a brush and just go off the edge rather than trying to go across the, the rim. Just come from the bottom and straight up. These are two. Uh, you say, oh, you say brush. What kind of a brush are you using? <laughs> I use a little uh, those acid brush that you get at Harbor Freight. Yep. About about three eighths inch wide. That's all. That's what I use. Do you turn them? Use, or do you use them straight out of the box? Straight out of the box. And I use the same brushes. I've been using them for years. So five different brushes, maybe. I now use water, just rinse them out. So what do, you mix, what do you mix the dyes in? What, what's your container of choice? <laughs> I usually use a uh, uh, Tide detergent to cap that goes on there. I just use that as my put some water in and put the dye in, stir it up with the brush. And then wash it out. Yes. So you have uh, running water in your shop. Well, I do it in house actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everything, all the dyeing is done off the lathe. Swarmly. These are two uh, eggs that I made. These are box elder, five inches by two and a half. The, uh, in the box elder, the red that's in the box elder, I put the dye, red dye over top of it so it stays red, doesn't fade to brown. This is a, a cord piece. This is one, one burl. And I dyed each piece different color. And the, the one in the center is natural. And this one is, I didn't leave the, I didn't put the size on. The biggest piece there is about 15 inches, I think. Did you say what brand the dyes are? I have questions. Trans tint. Trans tint. Yeah. Where Trans -tint, do you get them? Yeah. Where do you get them? Uh, I bought it online, but I believe Woodcraft does carry it. And they come in little two ounce bottles and they they last. I've had it for 10 years now and I'm still in the same bottles because I only use a couple drops. I've made hundreds of pieces with them. Backwards again. There's another maple that with the red and the blue. This one is a uh, box elder. Toby, what do you do with these pieces? I sell them. <laughs> I sell everything. Where do you sell them? Uh, there's about 20 different local shops here in central Pennsylvania that I have things in. And I sell a good bit right off of Facebook from my followers. And then I do a couple shows also. Are trans uh, tent dyes, are they food safe? Well, I coat them with the... Uh, actually use a triple thick clear coat from Krylon. So I coat the dye, dye anyhow, so it's, it's not going to come in contact with anything. So I don't believe it is food safe if you don't put a, a top coat on. So the top coat you're using is Krylon from a rattle can? Yes, exactly. And how many coats so of that do you put? Seller. How many coats of that do you put on? It depends on the wood and how it soaks in, but usually three or four. And then I buff it up afterwards after that. 
With what, uh, the be-all system, three wheels? Yes, yep. Yeah, I, I only use two wheels, though. I don't, I don't use the, uh, the wax. You just go from rouge to white diamond? Correct. This is a cherry burl. <clears throat> Yellow and blue I used on this one to dye. This is a maple piece. I went in the heartwoods down the bottom there. I went over that with red. And then uh, I must have mixed up green. I'm not sure how I got the, the color on this. I forget. <laughs> I don't think I went over the red. I think I kind of blurred the uh, around here. Can you see my arrow going? Yes, we can. Okay. Do you photograph everything on the way out the door? Uh, I usually store up and I get about five or six pieces and then I. I on top of my chest freezer in the basement is where I take the photos. <laughs> I put a gradient background up and use a just one light. As you can see, the dark shadow down here. I just use one light. Well, the shadow anchors the piece in uh, 3D space. It's important, I think. Yeah, I do too. And sometimes if the shadow is real harsh, I have a, a reflector on the one side to lighten up just the shadow. But often I just leave the shadow as is. And what are you shooting with? Your phone or a yes no, I, I have a canon that's sitting here i don't know what kind it is it's a canon you know like a regular d uh, dsl yeah. yeah we want that one here's another one that's uh, from uh, cherry burl this one amazed me i just put all i used on this was blue dye and it just showed up differently in different areas of the wood because of this the spalted area that the sapwood on the top was kind of spalty and, and, you know, the fungus was in there. Wow, beautiful piece. This this one is four and a half inches across. Where do you get most of your wood? <laughs> right around the house in the neighborhood. And uh, so, sometimes I'll drive by and if somebody, you know, they cut a tree down or the farmers in the area, I'll, I'll stop and ask them. They're uh, in between their, their fence rows. There's a lot of cherry burl in my area, so I you know, have this available. So I just stop and ask, oh yeah, you can have that. This was another piece of that same cherry burl with the uh, the sapwood that had some spalting on it. This one has a lid that sits on the rim on the inside. I just painted the lid black. I forget what kind of wood it was, probably cherry or maple. Another piece of that same and just with one color just putting the blue on there it came out with all this variation of color this one is box elder and then again i went over this red with with uh, red dye first and then blue over top of it this is a piece of maple just in between the limbs another figure Another piece of maple, and this has a, a lid on it, and then, then this uh, walnut for the for the knob and the space in there. Toby, how many pieces a year do you make? Hmm. These bigger pieces like this, I probably make uh, fifty to seventy-five. And then I do a lot of small pieces, you know, knickknack type things, mushrooms and Christmas trees and and weed pots. They sell pretty good, but I probably do. Ugh, 100 or 200 of those a wow. year a lot of production this, this one is uh, well i'm retired <laughs> what else do i do this one is poplar i like the way this one's again just blue dye over top of it this is a uh, 11 and a half by two inches so if you're retired what did you do before you retired i worked at the post office for 37 years or something like that. And uh, I sorted mail. So I did the same thing over and over again every night. So now I, you know, and I did what I was told working for somebody, well, the government. Now I do what I like to do and when I want to do it. <laughs> Fabulous. This, this is maple. I dyed orange. There's another piece of maple. Showing the figure. This one I did two two tones, red on the inside and this blue on the outside. 
piece of ox elder that I, the only dye part I did on here was the red. And as before, when I told I told you I did the red and it looked harsh when you first put it on to the brush strokes. On this one, because I didn't put another color over top of it, I just washed over it with plain water and it had the same effect. It just muted out the, the harsh strokes. So it looks more natural, like it blends in in the area. Did you use the same brush for that? You mean from the red to, to the water? No, I used, I used a, a new brush. So it didn't have any, any hint of any other color. But it's one of those acid brushes. Yeah, yeah, the same acid type of brush. Right? Whoa. <laughs> all, all this dark stuff is the spalting rotted stuff. Again, I had this in a, in a plastic bag for a while. I think that's all I have. Hey, Toby, that's a fabulous slideshow. I'm going to kill the slide so we can talk to you. Okay. Uh, gonna, yeah, questions for Toby. I guess not. <laughs> well, I think it was a terrific slide. I'd, I'd like to know what the, the exact number of the blue dye that you use is. Uh, I don't have it here with me, but it's just trans tint blue. Hmm. And I, I think bright. I think I just call it blue. There's, there's. I use three colors. I use the red, the yellow, and the blue, and then all the other colors. You just, you know, the primary colors. So I just mix. From there, and like right. I say, I've been using that so, those same two ounce containers for the last probably eight years that I've been dying things. <laughs> it's remarkable work, Toby. It's really beautiful stuff. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, so where did you uh, get the idea to start dyeing the wood? Well, from watching videos, and I forget who exactly it was, but one guy started dyeing, so I <laughs> I bought some of this dye. I, I don't know exactly what pushed me to that brand, but I got it. <laughs> and the first time I dyed something, it was a big, like 14 inch uh, box elder burl bowl with a natural edge, kind of like the other pieces you saw there. And this is the first piece that I dyed. And I put blue dye on it. And I thought, oh, that looks really neat. And then when it dried, it got all pastel looking. And I thought, oh man, I ruined this piece. So I put some more dye on it, thinking, oh yeah, I fixed it. And it dried again, it got all pastel. I thought, oh. So I put one more coat on, so I had three coats on this thing. <laughs> And then I thought, oh, well, I'm just going to finish it anyway. And once I put the finish on, it re reverts right back to when the way it looks when it's wet, has the nice gloss and shine to it. So that's how I, that was my first piece. Do you sand them after you dye them? No, no, I, it's I prep everything first, get it as if you were just going to, you know, hand it to somebody unfinished. And then I put the dye on and then uh, sometimes I'll go over it with one of those uh, 3M scr scrunch pads or whatever they're called. And to, to uh, take down the raised grain a little bit, and then I'll put my finish on it. Yeah, I would think you'd get a lot of raised grain with wet dyes. Wow, beautiful stuff. Oh, thank you very much for this, Toby. Um, I'm gonna go, uh, we have a few minutes left and we have a lot, a lot of the people with their hands up. So in the interest of uh, hearing from more, I'm gonna go to Kai next. Wood shop. Thank God for wood. <laughs>